Alright guys, welcome to another requested tutorial. Um, and Darren Harrison asked, uh, I was wondering if any of your tutorials in Bugs 3 cover touch events for moving bodies. Well, not yet, but why not just add that to our collection? Alright, so let's get started. Um, I've got this application running here, and um, it probably lags like hell in your recording, uh, but we want to get from this, as you can see, nothing, um, to this. Yeah, like I said, legs like hell, but I can drag this ball around, and yeah, you could basically drag everything around. And if I press here, nothing happens, but if I, if I click here and stuff, yeah, I can just move it around exactly on that position that I uh, clicked on. So you uh, probably s have seen this behavior sometimes already, um, because this is simply using the so-called mouse joint from box to d It was actually made for debug. But, well, you, we can move bodies around like that, so that's what we're doing. Um, okay, so right now, um, here I got the source code for the version where I couldn't do anything. And um, it's basically just setting up a world, okay? So I th thought I'd just skip this part where I set up the world, where I create the debug renderer, the orthographic camera, oops, not like that, um, and then just a ball and a ground. I think you can definitely do that if you're looking for how to move bodies around in the world. So, uh, yes, yeah, just the camera stuff, this pose stuff, uh, world step world renderer dot render and create some ground and some ball. So you should probably uh, most likely be familiar with that. If not, uh, this pro tutorial is probably not the right choice for right now. Anyway, however, um, let's actually get started creating the mouse joint. So the first thing that we need for a mouse joint is actually some input. So let's go ahead and extend the input adapter. We could also just implement the input processor, but um, we have to type less like that, so I'm just doing it. Um, now we want to override some of the methods and I'll just put them down here and we'll override the touch down, touch dragged and touch up method because they are all fired from the mouse and that's what we want to use. So that kind of makes sense. Then we can just turn all this stuff here into false or something or let's actually just turn it into true immediately. Alright, and now we can get started creating a mouse joint. So, the first thing that we need for a mouse joint is obviously a mouse joint def, because that's what you need for every kind of joint. So, private mouse joint def, let's just call it joint def, equals new, oh, yeah, why not? Let's just cut it off here and go into the show method and just put one here mouse joint. Then we'll say joint def equals the new mouse joint def and we can set all kinds of things to it. So there are a few things that we have to set. Um, the first thing, the body A. Now this is confusing because we have joint def dot body A and joint def dot body B as you can see here body A and body B and it says the first attached and the second attached body. But now if you think of the mouse joint, I just moved one body around, right? I didn't actually move two bodies around. So why do we need two bodies? Well, that's simply because of the architecture of the um, of the joints in box 2D. Because, like I said, the mouse joint was originally made uh, for the test bed. So it didn't have to be super ultra perfect. And they just extended the joint, which definitely makes sense. And the joint always connects two bodies, so it needs two bodies. We have this body A in here, which will, for the most part, uh, be ignored, but we definitely do have to set it, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and set it. This is going to be the ground. Now where does the ground come from? Right there. Okay. So then joint dev dot body B is not going to be set by us, because we want to figure out what body B is. Uh, when we actually click something. 
so yeah, you could also just say something like world dot create body body dev and you'd be done it just has to be some kind of body and it should not be static i think it crashes if it's static so what else is there to set um oh yeah i just want to mention body b is the one that we're actually moving around body a is totally inactive not affected nothing so let's just set collide connected to true because i want that and what else is there Damping ratio, I don't need that. Frequency hertz, I don't need that. Max force is probably interesting because that's actually the force that the mouse joint is going to uh, apply to the body that you're moving around. So let's just say that's 500. And well, we've got the target, but we don't want to set that yet because the target is actually the mouse click position where you want to move. And we don't know that yet. We didn't even click yet. So that's all for the very basic setup of the joint definition for our mouse joint. Now we can move on to our touch down, touch up and touch drag methods. At first, let's move the touch drag methods between these two because that's the order they are called in. Touch down, then move the mouse around and then release the click. And start with our touch down method. So at first we need to um, figure out is there a body that has been clicked? And that's actually the most complicated thing of, of this whole video right now. Um, at first, we take our camera and unproject. Well, what do we unproject? Unproject, we unproject a vector 3. So let's just say we have vector 3 called temp and set that to screen x, screen y, and 0. Then, of course, we have to actually go ahead and create this vector 3 temp equals new vector 3. Okay. And import the class, probably. So we are unprojecting the vector 3 that we are setting to these screen coordinates, so we get the world coordinates. That's nothing really new. You probably knew that already. Um, it's basically converting from click position to world position in box 2D. Then the next thing that we want to do is a little bit more complicated. There's this method. W w what do we actually want to do? We have the coordinates in world coordinates right now. And now we want to see if there is some body and actually some fixture at that position so we can drag that around. Um, for this, we could, of course, the first thing idea that you'll probably get is, oh yeah, why not just iterate over all the bodies and iterate over all the body's fixtures and then test if one point is in there. And that's actually possible. You can do that. It definitely works, but it's slow. Imagine you have a box 2D scene with thousands of objects. Well, you probably don't have that, but <laughs> with a bunch of objects on a PC, that's possible. Not for Android, really. But however, it's slow. You have to iterate over all the bodies and fixtures, which is slow, and test the point for all of them, which is slow. <laughs> so instead of that, we want to use a method of the world called Curie a -A -B -B, and it's still written with an uppercase Q. I don't know, probably that's left from C++. Anyway, this takes a Curie callback, whatever that is, a lower x, lower y, upper x, and upper y. So Curie a -A -B -B basically says, um, a A B B is like a rectangle, that's basically it. And Curie, well, obviously. Curie, if in this rectangle there is anything in, if yes, give me that. So, let's just say now for now, and um, we're going to put some stuff in here. Uh, I can already tell you that we need... Nope, not yet. <laughs> we are going to say temp.x temp.y and just temp.x and temp.y again because um, this is actually a point. We want a rectangle that is a point. So we kind of abuse these Curie AABB method uh, for a point. It's actually meant for a rectangle, but there is nothing for a point. So that doesn't matter at all. Now we have a point that's a rectangle. There we go. Now we need this actual um, yeah, Curie. Let's go ahead and create a Curie, uh, Curie callback, like up there. No, better up there. Private uh, Curie 
call back query call back equals new query call back and there we go import that thing and then we get this report fixture method well report fixture is called if from this world.curioabb method he finds a fixture in the aabb slash rectangle that we supplied and well, we can do all kinds of stuff with that fixture. For example, take it into the joint definition as body B, uh, but the fixture's body, of course. So now we figured out what body B is, right? Well, at first we should actually check if the fixture actually contains the point um, that we set. So we want to say uh, it doesn't contain temp.x and temp dot y because the aabb is a rectangle and it tests for other aabbs so if we had like a circle and we had this query aabb we would actually test if the two rectangles of those overlap a rectangle that you could put around the circle and there is some space that is in this rectangle around the circle but not the circle itself so we first have to actually test if this point is in the fixture. And if that is not the case, we'll just say we return. I'm returning true here because if you hover over this, you'll see um, this method returns false to terminate the query. And well, let's actually return false then. <laughs> All right, so in the case we arrive at this position here, we know that this point is in the fixture and that we probably want to set up a mouse joint to drag around this object, this fixture. Um, so we have to get the body of the fixture and set that as body B because remember up here we set body A because that's kind of necessary for no reason and body B is the one that we are dragging around. Then the next thing to set is the target. Now the target is simply a vector 2 that um, well is the target where we want to move the body to. Basically the mouse position in the box of the coordinates. So this is temp.x and temp.y. Then joint dev dot what else? Did I forget anything? Nope. That's all of it. Then we can say joint is world dot create joint Pass the joint def in, and there we go. Um, well, joint doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create it. Up here. Private mouse joint joint. Done. As simple as that. Let's go back down, and we get an error because we have to cast this to a mouse joint because create joint returns a generic joint, but that can be anything, a rope joint, a distance joint, or a mouse joint. In this case, we know it's a mouse joint because we pass a mouse joint definition in. All right, so we got done with that. We created the mouse joint. Still not really nice because let we yeah we can actually try it out. Let's try it out. You're going to see the issue, and don't mind that it totally lags. That's how it is in the beginning. So I go ahead, and yeah, the mouse joint is probably being created, but we don't update its target if we move around, and we don't destroy it if I let go of yeah if I start clicking so well let's go ahead and do that um okay now slow this a little bit down uh, down a little bit in the touchdown method we unproject the point we query the point rectangle kinda then uh, this query callback uh, gets the fixture here. We test if the point is actually in there. We set the body P to the fixture's body. We set the target to the mouse coordinates. And, um, well, we create the joint. Now in touch dragged, when we move the mouse around, we actually want to update this target here so that the, the, the body is dragged into the correct, correct, correct direction. So at first, Touch drag doesn't always mean it has followed right after this touchdown and there was actually a, a joint created. We might have clicked anywhere. So at first we need to check if joint equals null. Because if that's the case, 
we just want to return false. If it's not the case, so we'll arrive here, um, we want to update the target. That's basically it. So join dot set target, and this takes a vector two. So let's say we have another temporary vector, and we set that one to temp dot x and temp dot y. Well, temp dot x and temp dot y is still set to what it has been touched down. So we have to actually unproject that using the camera. Camera dot unproject vector three, which is temp dot set screen x screen y and zero. Now we just have to create the missing temp two vector down there, which we can do up here. And that's it. Okay, so now we can grab the thing and move it around. We should actually be able to do it. Let's check out if I am talking crap or if it's working. Ah, right. We forgot one very essential thing, and that is to actually set this thing that it extends the input adapter as, well, the input processor. So gdx.input.set input processor this, and we're done. Very important though. So right now I can grab it, as you can see, and I can move it around. But what happens if I stop grabbing it, if I release the click? Well, it gets stuck where it is, because the mouse joint is still there, it's not destroyed. And if I do this stuff now, um, he always sets the position again, because uh, I have a look at what's happening he doesn't find a fixture, the fix, uh, he, this is just not called, so when I move the mouse around again, uh, we just set the target of the old joint that should not be there anymore. So let's go ahead and when I release the mouse, um, destroy the joint. This is going to happen in touch up, because that's when I release the mouse. And again, we have to check if joint equals null, because if that's the case, we want to just leave. Because if the joint is null, we don't have to destroy it. It's probably already destroyed. Um, Alright, this is really simple. World.destroy joint, joint. That's it. And then, uh, to make sure that we pass this, uh, yeah, this, this, what this is called? this if. Let's just say this if. Uh, to make sure we pass through there the next time, we are just going to set joint to null. This is not necessary for the joint to actually disappear in the box 2D world, but if we clicked on something again and dragged something else around again, a uh, joint would not be null anymore and we wouldn't be able to pass through here. So this is actually the whole mouse joint already. So, let's get one leggy example again. I click it, I pick it up, and now I let go of it. There we go. This is all that we needed to do. As simple as that. Then, that's the way you can implement it yourself, and just some quick kind of, um, yeah, if you want to have a simpler thing, uh, there is uh well what is it called mouse joint adapter test you can also just do it like that as you see this is basically what we had at the beginning of this episode we have um a ball and a ground and from libgdx utils there is this mouse joint adapter that you pass just in a mouse joint definition right like right this here where you just set the stuff you want and the body a then you can specify if you want to adapt the max force to the body's mass, so you have actually the same kind of strength for everybody, and the camera needed to unproject the click positions. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. See you the next time, episode, whatever. Have a great day coding. Yeah, see you then.